I teach this everywhere. How many of you have ever seen this? Those of you that work with my coaches, I'm sure you've seen this flip chart. Above and below the line, we call it. So above the line, there's ownership, accountability, and responsibility. Below the line, there's blame, excuse, and denial. Let's deal with below the line first. What are the three below the line, gang? Number one? Blame. Number two? Excuse. And? Denial. So let's see if you've got any of these people in your company. Denial. This person is usually the one that thinks they're a rock star, but they actually suck. They think they are the genius. They've actually told people in your company, if it wasn't for me, this company would go under. If I wasn't here, this company would be falling out. It's me that holds this thing together. They'll sit in meetings, say nothing, walk out of the meeting and start sabotaging everything you said to every other employee. How many of you got one or two of those? Say, yeah. You know, some of you aren't willing to admit to it, are you? It's like, yeah, I got one. See, the thing about this, and then you've got the excuse-itis people. These are the ones that always have a reason. There's always an excuse for not doing it. What's their number one excuse in most cases? Ran out of time. That's the adult version of the dog ate my homework. Then blame. How many of you got those people? They've always got a finger to point at someone else. Anyone got some of them? See, this is the thing. Down here, if you've got these, that's because you're either doing bad management or no management. Your management will lead to this happening in your company or lack of management. Now, why is there a lack of management? Very simply put, management for some reason has been killed off by leadership. People seem to think that you're either a manager or a leader. And for some even worse reason, there is this connotation that if you're a manager, it's bad. You should be a leader, not a manager. No, you have to be both. Management skills. Management is day to day, week to week, month to month. Leadership is month to month, quarter to quarter, year to year type stuff. Leadership doesn't happen every day. What happens every day? Management. People say you don't need to micromanage people. Absolute bullshit. Half of your employees need serious management. If they don't have management, they will do what? Almost nothing. Good management leads to good productivity. And this is a really important point. You've got to manage first before you lead. Because if you don't manage, you get this stuff down here. So let's look at this stuff just for a second. Let's see how it's happening in companies. If a business owner, let's just say this, what will this get out of these three up here? If a business owner lets an employee get away with something, lets them get away with it, lets them get away with it, lets them get away with it, what's that breeding up there, the bottom one? What is it? Denial, because you keep letting them get away with it. You don't confront them when they're doing stupid shit, therefore they get away with it, therefore they, in, they live in denial because you're living in denial. How many of you love confrontation? Where are those of you that love confrontation? Okay, this should be a yes, I love confrontation. Those of you who don't love confrontation, you will suck at running a business. You've got to love confrontation to run a business. Now, I don't mean aggressive confrontation, but you've got to stop people when they're doing the wrong thing. When? Immediately. You know, the craziest thing, if you let people get away with small things, eventually they get away with big things. Business owners that don't confront anyone end up with employees in denial. And 80% of the time when they get to being that bad, you've got to fire them. But they only got that bad because you didn't manage them. Okay, you've got to manage these people. You've got to deal with the situation right there and then. Tell them what the reality is, where they're at. How do you deal with someone in denial? You sit them down, you have a conversation with them. Hey, I know you think you're the best employee here. The reality is you're actually in the worst employee list in the company. You are one of the worst people here. Let me tell you why. Don't talk to me yet. Let me tell you why. You tell people in the company, if it wasn't for you, the company would be under. You tell people this. You do that. You do this. You've got to have your numbers. You've got to have your stats to back it up and tell them this stuff. And then you've got to move them forward and say, listen, I want you to be a great employee in the company. Here's how I've made a list of everything you need to do to be a great employee in the company. There's at least 11 things on the list. One of them is you're going to check in with me every day for the next 90 days, every morning, every afternoon. We're going to go through what you've got to do and what you've got done. What are they going to say? Somewhere in amongst all that. I can't possibly do all that. Okay, well, I accept your resignation. Just put it in writing and we'll be fine. How many of you are good at that, by the way? <laughs> Letting people resign without them even knowing they're resigning. It's, it's a skill you've got to build. Excuses. How do you... This is what happens in companies. If you walk into a set of employees and you ask them the question of, why isn't that done? What will you get? Excuses. So is your management leading to excuses or is your management leading them forward? Where are you taking them with this? How can you get blame? What question would you ask, everyone? Who? Who's supposed to have this done? 
See, and this is the thing, when we talk about managing people, management comes first because we can't lead without management. So let's look at two very important parts of management. Number one, measuring. What's number one, everybody? Whatever you measure gets managed. If you don't measure it, it can't get managed. So if you want something to get better, you've got to measure it on a daily, weekly basis. Some of them hourly in different businesses. But the more you measure, the higher the pressure gets put on that person to actually perform. If there's no measurement, how can you manage them? It's not possible to manage someone that doesn't have measurement. Second part of management that we have to be focused in on, clarity of their job, what they're actually doing, how they're doing it, when they're supposed to do it. If, if I, well, let's do this. Tomorrow, I want you to all do an activity with every employee that reports directly to you, okay? Now, by the way, you shouldn't have more than eight direct employees. Okay, if you've got a dozen or two dozen people, and this is this whole leadership rubbish of you've got to have a flat organisation structure. That's killed the ability for high productivity. Productivity diminishes if there's no management of people. So if you've got, eight, if you've got more than eight, what do you end up doing all day, every day? Managing people. Who does your job? No one. No one's growing the business because you're too busy managing the day-to-day -day stuff. So build management in. Now, every single employee that directly reports to you tomorrow, I want you to sit them down at a table. I want you to give them a notepad, you a notepad. Ask them to write down what are the 10 things you think your job is. You write down 10 at the same time. So they're writing down what they think their job is. You're writing it down at the same time. What do you think the chances are that it's 10 out of 10 match? Almost nil, okay? What, what's going to match? About 30% is going to match on each side. Will that be exciting, by the way? You guys don't look excited by that activity. It's like, no, I don't want to do that activity, Brad. Here's the thing, though. If you think their job is one thing and they think it's another, how can they possibly do a good job? If you're not meeting with them on a regular basis to discuss, like, you know how they have to write that list on a Friday afternoon of everything they've got to do the next week? You know, do you remember the list we discussed? What do you do on Monday morning? Sit with all of your staff and go through every person's list of everything they've got to do that week. It shouldn't take more than one hour, but you're communicating with that guy, hey, that impacts her. You're communicating with her, hey, that impacts him. Make sure that you guys are on track. You're actually doing what? Managing people. So manage first is a very important part. Clarity of job is one of the biggest key. See, if someone doesn't have clarity, they say, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do it. They blame someone else or they come up with an excuse. That stuff happens all the time. So once we've got uh, the management down, then second, we need to go into leadership. Then and only then do we worry about leadership. It's at that point in time where leadership actually starts to matter because now we've got them out of blame, out of excuse, out of, your deni out of denial. How do you lead someone that's always got an excuse for something? You can't. You've got to manage that out and then you can start the leadership side of it. So let's think about what leadership actually is on a, from a month-to-month, -month, week week-to-week basis. It's about two things, enrolling people and inspiring people. What are the two things everybody called out with some passion? Enroll and, enroll and inspire. So to enroll, we have to have a vision. But if we're going to continually enroll people, we've got to continually do what? Show them the vision, explain the vision, give them an understanding of what that vision is all about. You know, you've got to keep talking about the vision. Every time I see a good leader, how often are they talking about where we're going? All the time. If all you're talking about is what did happen, that's management. Leadership is about where we're going, what we're going to do. Inspiring people. This is where you go to the culture. This is where you're going. If you're not discussing the culture, showing the culture, leading them with the culture that you've got written down, your core values or whatever it is, then it's hard to inspire people to do more, to achieve more, to be more. A leader's number one job is communication. What's their number one job? If you don't communicate very much, like for me in Action Coach, I don't have the time to, or the ability to talk one-on-one -on -one with every single person in all of our offices around the world. But what I do every single month is record a video, 10, 20 minutes of me explaining to everyone in the world how we're doing, what we're up to, what's happening now, what's where. So that video goes out to everyone in the world. It's dead simple, easy to do. But if you're not doing that type of communication with your people, it's very hard to sit back and go, oh, that's how we get better communication. Keep communicating. Second biggest job of a leader is congratulations. What would it take for you to every single day congratulate at least two people in your company on a job well done? 
And it doesn't have to be that whole thing of, oh, employee of the month award. It just has to be a text, a simple text message to one of your employees that said, hey, saw the work you did on the Smith job. Fantastic stuff. Keep it up. A simple email to someone, simple handwritten card saying, hey, I noticed the work you've been doing. Thanks for doing that. Drop it on their desk at the end of the day. See, that is not complex, not hard to do. It's easy to forget though, isn't it? Easy to forget to do. You want to forget about it? You won't build a team, therefore you'll have to keep working for the rest of your life. You want to build people who are high performers? You've got to make sure you build them into high performance.